Hey now, it's time to learn about fraction multiplication using rectangle models. Sometimes using a visual like a rectangle model or a picture of some sort is a good way of understanding what is happening when there's an operation that maybe you've been doing for years like a robot but you don't actually know what you're doing. For example, let's say we have a problem like this. Traditionally, you would look at that and you'd go, oh, one-half times three-fourths, or yes, one-half times three-fourths, and you would do something like this. You would go, oh, one times three on top of two times four, and you would get your answer. Great, you're happy, choose C, and you're correct. But what's actually happening here? I think it's important to understand why that works and what's happening. So to truly understand this, let's go back to the beginning here. What's happening when you're multiplying a fraction is you're taking a piece of a piece. What I mean by that is three-fourths is already a piece of something. It's part of something larger, part of the whole. Okay, And then multiplying, that's where the word of comes in. And you can see that we're taking a piece of that piece. So we're going to get an even smaller piece. What does that mean? Well, let's use a model to figure it out. First of all, just draw a rectangle. And to know what the piece of a piece is, first we have to have the first piece, which is the second number in the problem. Right? So we need this piece to be shown here. So we split the rectangle into four pieces. That's the denominator, is the number of pieces. And the top is we're going to shade in the numerator. So we've got four pieces, let's shade in three of them. I'm using a little diagonal shading here. Okay and I'll explain why in a minute. So there's our piece. Now we need to take half of that piece. So um, in step two we're just going to cut that whole thing in half. So we're a uh, number of pieces again. This time we're going horizontal and one out of those two which means ignoring all the shading and all the other lines Let's shade in half of what we just did there. See that? This is two pieces. We just shaded in half of it. Okay? So what we've got here, and I'm going to circle this to really show you, we've got some parts that were colored twice. Okay? That's what's the uh, intersection or the union of these two fractions. And that's actually the answer. So we just count how many total pieces are there? Eight total pieces. And how many were shaded twice? Three of them. So let's put it all back together. One half of three fourths is three eighths. And this is how you would say it. Of, there's the word of that tells you to multiply. fourths is is the same as equals three eighths okay one half of three fourths is three eighths if you remember those little words those can be very helpful <clears throat> all right so there's the lesson I'm gonna do a sample problem with you and then I'll give you a few practice problems Sound good? I thought so. Here we go. 
practice together. We have two thirds of one eighth, right? So first we need to show the one eighth before we can take two thirds of it. Okay, we have to order the pizza before we can have a piece of it, right? Think of that as pizza and slice. Maybe that'll help you remember. Got to have the pizza first or you can't have a slice. So first I'm going to represent one eighth. There's eight pieces. And I'm going to shade one of them. Then I'm going to make three pieces go in the other direction. All right? One, two, three pieces. I'm going to shade going the other direction. Two out of those three. <clears throat> so what you see represented here by the pieces that got shaded twice is the answer. Okay. Total number of little boxes here, 24. Shaded twice, 2. We can simplify that to 1 12th. There. All right, now it's time for you to do a few problems all by yourself using this method. A fresh piece of paper here. All right, time for some practice. I'm going to give you three problems, then I want you to uh, pause the video, copy them down, do the work, showing your work using a rectangle model, and then uh, hit play and let's compare how we do it. There's three problems for you, okay? Write them down, pause the video, and I'll see you in a couple minutes. Have fun! Welcome back. I hope that was quick and easy for you. Once you do a few repetitions, it's no big deal. Remember, we've got pizza and piece. That's the best way I can think about telling you what order to do things in. We need the thing, we need the piece before we can take a piece of the piece. So first we're going to make the two fifths. There's the fifths. There's two. That's two fifths. Then we're going to take one third of that. One, two, three. So we're going to color in one out of three. I just circled the part that got colored twice. There's two of them. Total number of pieces, 15. Two fifteenths is what one third of two fifths is. Next, one sixth. Got it? Then we take three-fourths of that. So we're going to split it into four pieces going this way. Color in three of them, go in the opposite direction. Makes it easy to tell which ones got hit twice, three of them. Total number of boxes here, 24. We can simplify that into one-eighth. But either one is acceptable, right? 324 actually describes the situation. 1 8th is the simplified version of that. Okay. <clears throat> and finally, my rectangles are getting worse as we go along here. Um, first, we're going to do the 1 5th. That's one fifth. Then we're going to take no extra charge for the sound effects, by the way. Then we're going to take two thirds of that. So we split it into three pieces. Denominator is always the number of pieces. Two is always, the numerator is always what you're shading in a model like this. I shade two out of the three sections. There we go. Two fifteenths. 
crazy. It's the first, it's the same as the first answer, huh? Wild, wild stuff. Okay. So that's it. Obviously, I want to uh, make note here and avoid uh, any uh, comments that might happen. Obviously, something like this, you could flip it and do this and get the same answer. Or you could start with the... Uh, Right, you could start with the one third and then do the two fifths, and you'll still get the same answer. I get that, I know that. Uh, multiplication is commutative, but my point here is when we're dealing, especially with story problems and situations that are represented often in algebra, um, it's important to put things in the right order as they relate to the story you're talking about so that the answer and your work actually makes sense. So that's why I'm saying this stuff belongs in a certain order. The word of, that's what you look for in the story problem. That's what tells you what goes first. And so you start with what you're taking a piece of, and then you go backwards and you take a piece of it. I hope that makes sense with my pizza analogy. And uh, there you go. Good luck. Live long and prosper. Bye.